Hello everyone, this is Pei Pei. I'm assistant professor of uh, University of Pittsburgh. I joined two years ago. Before that, I graduated from UCLA Computer Science Department, and I even spent two years in industry working on, at that time, the most powerful AI data center hardware. Well, we are the top one for a few weeks, but then you know the story. So uh, today I'm going to discuss about these ch architecture challenges and the innovations for computer infrastructure co-design. So with that, I want to first show an interesting data. So guess how long it takes to get one million users for ChatGPT? Two months? OK. That's a good guess. Actually, it's five days. So the ChatGPT like, attracted the users from zero to one million in just five days. And this is like a 30x speed up compared to Spotify. It's like 15x compared to Instagram. So that amazing ChatGPT gave us all those like uh, power to generate the text based on what you input. And also, it gave us a lot of full capabilities in computing like this vision and also text together, combine these multi models together and let us to describe uh, pictures uh, instantly or let us give us a beautiful pictures based on your description or even like uh, write stories with just one sentence or high level idea. So this powerful models actually needs huge data and also a huge amount of computation. So if we look at this uh, architecture, like what's the components within all this model, this generative AI model, foundation model, or transformer-based model, we see matrix multiply. So this is all these matrix multiply kernels connected with the nonlinear kernels, streaming from one layer to another layer, spanning all 100 layers, building a big, like a 175 billion parameter models. They are all composed of these different sizes of matrix multiply. So if we take a, like a detailed performance profiling and understanding of this transformer model, we can actually find all those architecture challenges and innovations we could uh, grab from all those existing computer architecture and design for the future computer architecture. So that's what we do as a first step. We profile a DEIT vision transformer model on the existing embedded GPU and see what the performance looks like, how we can get better. So we took this uh, performance analysis and uh, just basically plot all those different kernels utilization and also this in timeline. And we summarize it in this figure. So if you see that, we have this matrix multiply kernel, which is, uh, uh, takes around like 99 percentage of the total computation within a transformer model. And also batch dot, that's a ba uh, batch matrix multiply. That's actually these attention kernels within a transformer model. But Z consumes only half of this time time, uh, time uh, within this latency. What about the ha na na another half? So although the another half, like kernels, the, the basically takes less than 1% of the total computation, but they take non-negligible GPU cycles. So we have to kind of like uh, reduce the latency for this part, right? And if you really calculate this matrix multiply utilization, you see another big problem. So nowadays, these hardware are severely underutilized. So we calculate this effective computation throughput within the GPU for this matrix multiply kernels, and the utilization is less than 15 percentage. So what does that mean? We buy like tens of thousands of dollars in getting a GPU, but we are only use 10 percentage of this hardware. That's a sad story, right? We want to boost the performance based on this architecture, based on this existing hardware, but we also want to make the most of our money for the future like architecture and also models deployment. So how we can improve on that? So I summarized all those, uh, lo uh, these uh, bottleneck, performance bottleneck here, but the key takeaway is that the current like, uh, off-the-shelf deep learning framework give us a low utilization on using existing hardware and also this uh, quantization and the dequantization, which involves a lot of this data transformation and the data re-layout of this, this is what we call the movement, consumes a significant GPU, GPU cycles. And also this uh, like a TensorRT doesn't give the users the full control on how we can deploy the specific kernels on either FP32 data type or integer age data type. Basically, we do not have the control. So, with that saying, if we can like, improve on these four sides one by one, 
we can significantly improve the hardware utilization. And also, we need efforts in building the software stack to enable this kind of opportunity. And also, we can kind of combine this hardware and software code design in the future to let the software the best and also make the most of this hardware. So that's the key idea. But we try to find a, like a platform to verify our idea or let's say to explore this uh, uh, architecture. So we did a further step in compile this same transformer model onto both GPU and also FPGA. So we know that FPGA is a fieldable programmable gate array, give us the most flexibility to map each kernels, right? We can design our own hardware based on this FPGA and then map each kernels within this specific part of this FPGA. We did this experiment on using FPGA U250, that's an every board, data center level FPGA board, and we also profile this latency. So here we have the comparison. If we use this uh, for FP32, that's a full, quantize, a full precision model, the latency is 50 milliseconds. Well, the GPU gives us like seven milliseconds. Well, if we use this quantized model in EJ8, FPGA see a significant improvement in latency, which gives us 7.3 latency, but the GPU is like four, that's good. Well, it's not good enough. We still have this uh, low utilization. And we see, okay, how about GPU plus FPGA? So we do find a platform which contains tensor cores, has a like massive uh, computation parallelism, and also this uh, full flexibility in programming FPGA. Basically, within the same SOC, we have tensor cores and FPGA, and we provide this uh, again, and then we deploy this integer quantized model into this heterogeneous SOC. Guess what we have? So we achieve a latency lower than 0.6 milliseconds, which translates to 8x speed up compared to GPU and also massive speed up compared to existing FPGA only solution. So we have this uh, GPU or let's say Tensor Core plus FPGA architecture give us the speed up what we want, which has the high speed up compared to FPGA only solution and also GPU only solution. How we can do that? Well, this architecture, let's say, we need these tensor cores first to compute all those uh, computation intensive kernels, including matrix and uh, matrix uh, uh, like operations. But we also need FPGA to compute all these other nonlinear kernels and also data, uh, data layout uh, change kernels and also this uh, different data format uh, transformation kernel. And also, we need this uh, software, so software stack to compile the deep learning models on this hardware to compose these heterogeneous architectures together, right? So we build this uh, software tools, and we build this heterogeneous accelerator architecture template to map these high-level models onto this, soft, uh, onto this heterogeneous accelerator architecture, which is featured with a vector processor, tensor cores, and also FPGA in the same system on chip. And we build this customization in the computation and also customization in the data flow. So customized in computation means that we allocate exact resource that is perfect for this specific cores or specific kernels within a model. And the customization in data flow means that we make sure that the data flows into the chip uh, flow into this chip for just once, and then after we compute, we send out the data to the DDR. So that's the only time we read in and read out uh, and write out. We do not have this excessive load because of uh, the scratch memory, da uh, memory data management or on-chip data buffer uh, design. So with that saying, we also can use FPGA to do this fine grain pipeline. What does it mean? So previously, let's say in GPU, we have the sequential call, which means that after one kernel launch, we launch another kernel, right? But what if like uh, instead of waiting, a whole block data is computed, we can use fine grain pipeline. Let's say once one data or one pixel of the previous layer is computed, we can store the next layer. So that's a key idea. And that's the key point how we can further improve the latency and reduce this whole pipeline or end-to-end -end application latency by to the extent of 10x. And uh, also we need hardware and software co-design support so that we can fit the model based on this, uh, let's say, le uh, latest uh, quantization technology to compress the model from FP32 data type to integer 8 data type, and then still gain the same accuracy without losing accuracy. We have the latest uh, like research findings saying that we have some ways to do this off the line, and then we can deploy the model with one percentage accuracy improvement by using integer 8 quantization. So this is a software a hardware co-design so that we can have this advanced algorithm change and also we can have this advanced compilation framework to map to this hardware. 
So we, this, is a, this actually brings us this uh, latency improvement over GPU-only solutions. We have this uh, different four vision transformer models deploying on this uh, hardware and also deploying using our latest software compilation tool. So this one, I think this is a, a general solution that can be applied to other models as well. And what if like we have a larger model, right? We said like this one, this model is uh, like a mid-sized model. What about these uh, big models? What about the GPT model, GPT-4, GPT-5 in the future? The answer is yes, we should use scale-out solutions. So with that uh, pinning like uh, the part of these uh, large models onto, where, uh, went to, onto one device, and then we can group like tens or hundreds of these devices together and uh, chain them together in using scale-out solution. And the key idea is that how we map a heterogeneous model onto using heterogeneous accelerators, considering both the computation and also communication, because we have the different interconnect architecture. Some of the data centers, they support one, or some of them support 10 gigabit, and some of them support 100. I even saw like 1.2 terabit like interconnect in our expo hall today. And that's the communication awareness uh, scheduling and the mapping strategy. Actually, we published one paper in DAC Design Automation, uh, uh, Design Automation Conference last year, one of the premium design automation conferences in the world, saying that we can map the heterogeneous models onto heterogeneous accelerators, giving this architecture input, giving this model input, and we have latency improvement and also energy efficiency improvement. And that's, he, that's the things we care uh, the most in this uh, data center infrastructure, right? And uh, we open source our tools. So if you are interested, interested please uh, uh, like, uh, discuss with me. We have uh, published this paper also in FPGA 23 this year. Uh, this is also the number one downloaded paper in FPGA 23 proceeding. And our open source tool has attracted over 85 stars. Uh, considering this is a hardware mapping solutions, not like AI latest AI model, I think this is a significant uh, uh, interest of, in the community on how to map models onto heterogeneous architectures. So what about the future? What about the chiplet system? Can we use the same methodology? The answer is yes. So we can use heterogeneous, we can map the heterogeneous models into heterogeneous data center, which contains heterogeneous SOC in this data center. And we can achieve this optimal solution after, uh, within this vast of design space exploration, right? So that's our goal. And we should consider both computation and also communication. And we probably need some heuristic to accelerate this design space exploration to, let's say, hierarchical uh, scheduling and mapping. And we consider both latency and throughput and system sustainability. So sustainability is also a very big issue in nowadays data center design. I know like uh, Meta, Google, and also Amazon have their zero like carbon emission target by 2030. I know Microsoft is even go further, it's negative emission. So that's an ambitious goal, but how we can do that? So we kind of like have this idea, actually this is a new project initially this year, uh, starting October 1st. Uh, we had a NSF National Science Foundation uh, Design for Sustainable Computing project that got funded, and this is a two million project spanning for four years. We will design a refresh FPJ. What does that mean? So we kind of like propose the idea to recollect all those decommissioned FPJ and build a new systems based on those re uh, uh, decommissioned FPJ with this uh, 2.5D interposer, build them together within a system in package, and then we can schedule those models onto this uh, refresh FPG by considering both computation and communication customization. So this is uh, led by Pitts. I'm the PI and also collaborated with the University of Notre Dame. And uh, with that, uh, we, can, we want to build a future which is both has the best energy efficiency and also good for the environment. So with that saying, thank you for all. And uh, let's welcome CEO Mark for the next talk. CEO Mark is the a director for CXL Construction and also uh, served on the uh, steering committee for OCP. Thank you. Will.